Hello everyone, this is my blog for skills versus capacities in the weight room task. A couple of things that I want you to have in mind as I work through this blog is that I work with young athletes that are 15 to 16 years old that have little to no training background. Therefore, they are going through the learning process as they complete these movements and they need time to help develop these movement patterns. Another thing that is very important is that I provide different types of feedback to these athletes so that they can improve their movement competency in a variety of ways. We will begin by looking at the back squat. The athlete on the left is going to demonstrate a capacity issue, while the athlete on the right is going to demonstrate more of a skill issue. Both athletes will complete their reps of the back squat, and you can get a sense of what each movement pattern looks like. So we will begin by looking at the skill issue that was outlined. You can see the athlete uh, raises their heels as they squat. They also have an anterior shift, which makes the concentric portion more quad dominant. And this gets worse as the athlete completes more reps. If we take a look from the front, you can see the athlete's right foot is behind their left foot. This causes the bar to tilt and also throws the athlete's balance off. One of the ways that I hope to correct this with the athlete is by have them complete some leg goblet squats in between their back squat sets. I have the athlete face the mirror for visual feedback as they go through the goblet squats and I cue them to touch their elbows to the top of their thighs so that they shift their weight back as they go through the squat and have more even distribution between their feet. This is the next session for the athlete. You can see they do a better job of loading their hips throughout the back squat, keep good alignment through their shin and torso angles as they move. However, the load is too heavy for them, so they start to go back to their old movement patterns as they continue on with repetition. Here's a comparison of the first week versus the second week. So the newer version is on the left-hand side there. You can see the athlete does have better technique as they complete the movement, and they still need to work on this moving forward. So this athlete is getting better at the skill but needs more practice in order to continually learn and master the back squat. Moving along to our capacity issue, you can see this athlete is missing 27 degrees of range of motion in order to get their thighs parallel to the ground. Another thing you can see from this athlete is that they take a very toe-out strategy in order to do their back squat. If we look at it from the front, this toe-out strategy actually gets worse as the athlete does the movement. And this creates a valgus moment for the athlete, which we want to try and avoid when we're squatting. So when I assess this athlete's ankle range of motion through knee to wall test, you can see that the athlete is about 32 degrees with their left leg, 29 degrees with the right leg, and therefore is missing about 5 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion that we would like to see. One of the strategies that I implemented with this athlete was to incorporate an ankle mobility drill that is bilateral in between their sets of back squats. For this drill, the athlete is facing a mirror and is getting feedback both on their foot position and their knee position as they complete the movement. You can see when the athlete keeps their toes facing towards the mirror that they struggle to control their valgus moment. The next exercise that I'll get an athlete to perform is a goblet squat. You can see they do have better alignment when they do it. There's less valgus. The toes don't flare out quite as much. Part of that is due to his footwear. Selection, the other part is due to the anterior load that you have in a goblet squat. So this is about a month later now. You can see that this athlete is starting to improve their back squat based off of the adjustments that we have made. If we look at the old version on the left compared to the new version on the right. You can see that the athlete has actually increased the range of motion quite a bit and has reduced the toe out position that they originally had. Hopefully it is evident that although this athlete has shown progress, they still need to do more work to continue to increase their ankle range of motion and get more depth on their squat moving forward. I'll now move to the counter movement jump, which is the second weight room activity that I'm going to analyze. So the first video will be a video of an athlete that demonstrates a skill issue. The second video will be an athlete that demonstrates a capacity issue. I will play both side by side now, the skill on the left, the capacity on the right, so you can get a sense of what each movement looks like. Starting with the skill issue, 
You see this athlete does a good job of loading their hips when they jump. They don't get full extension in the air, and when they land, they land too much on their toes and have too much of a heel rise. I will now show two subsequent jumps, and you can see that this athlete's strategy changes from jump to jump. Therefore, this demonstrates more of a skill issue. One of the exercises that I like this athlete to do is depth drops. That way they focus on sitting back a little bit more on landing, absorbing some force. And a cue that I like to have for this is let me slide a credit card under your heel, not a textbook like she had in the previous videos. When performing plyometrics with this athlete, I want them to focus on getting tall in the air and owning the floor when they land. You can see this athlete is starting to do this better through these jumps. Now this is two weeks later. You can see the athlete when they jump, they still get good loading through their hips. They get nice and tall in the air. However, on the landing, there is still too much of a heel raise. Now here's a comparative view with the old video on the left and the newer video on the right. You can see that the athlete is starting to show more signs of competency in this movement skill even after only two weeks of training. Now we will move on to the capacity example that I have for the counter movement jump. As this athlete jumps, I want you to pay particular attention to the athlete's feet to get a sense of where they're taking off versus where they're landing. Hopefully you can see that this athlete does shift to the right in the air and does land more on the right side of the force plates at the end of the movement. If I pull up the force plate data for this day and look at their average of three jumps, you can see that the athlete does show quite a bit of asymmetry here. What we are looking at is the breaking phase of the jump, and on the left-hand side, or the y-axis, you will see that negative numbers are listed. This is showing in percentage the amount of asymmetry this athlete ha has due to right-side dominance. This asymmetry is also seen and expressed in a cyclical exercise, such as the walk bike sprint, where the athlete produces more force through their right leg compared to their left. Therefore, I consider this a capacity issue due to a lack of force production by this athlete, specifically through their left leg. Because this athlete has no training background, I want them to get stronger and be able to produce force both through bilateral exercises, such as back squatting and trap bar deadlifts, and unilateral exercises, such as rear foot elevated split squats and box step ups. I also want to expose this athlete to plyometric training. One of the things that I do want this athlete to focus on is loading in a triple flexion position, that is flexion of the ankles, knees, and hips, getting nice and tall in the air and getting triple extension of these joints, and then landing back in that triple flex position. We will then do this unilaterally as well, and over time we will increase the pace of this so that they are decreasing the amount of ground contact time in between each jump. Right now, the athlete has done two months of full training on a strength conditioning program. So let's have a look at how they are jumping. You can see that the athlete is more balanced on their jumps now. And I will pull up a comparison from the previous jumps so that you can see that this athlete is not deviating to the right nearly as much as they once were. If I go back to the force plate data, you can see over time this athlete has done a good job of eliminating that right side asymmetry. The athlete started around 25% of a right side dominance and is now hovering around 7 to 8%, which is a lot safer of an asymmetry. Most counter movement jump asymmetry research has shown that an asymmetry of 15 to 20% or greater has an increased likeliness to injury. Therefore, this athlete has now moved away from that ratio and is a lot safer in the 7 to 8% range. This asymmetry is also decreased and non-existent now in the walk bike sprint that the athlete completed. However, if I look at this athlete's most recent jump from the front, you can see that this athlete does externally rotate their feet quite a bit, and I wanted to have a deeper look at this. So first I assess the athlete's gait, and you can see that they do have a toe out gait as they walk towards the camera. Using the selective functional movement assessment as a guideline, I assess the athlete's internal and external rotation of their tibia. I would be looking for normal range of 20 degrees of motion 
However, the athlete demonstrates only three degrees of internal rotation on the left side and nine degrees of internal rotation on the right side. Therefore, I do passive tests on the athletes and there's no improvement in range of motion. Therefore, the athlete has been referred to a physiotherapist to treat this lack of mobility. In summary, I've provided examples of skill and capacity issues in both the back squat and the counter movement jump. With these young athletes, you can see that they do respond quite well to some interventions and how important it is to implement stuff in between sets so that the athlete can continue to do the exercise and improve on it without taking away from the training environment. Also, the importance of providing feedback in terms of using the mirror, using the force plates, and using video analysis was important for these athletes to build and continue to improve their movement competency. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my vlog.